Okay, here we are. Hi guys, how are you? How are you feeling today? How is your skin today? Um, I am having postpartum, some postpartum breakouts lately. Um, for those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Denise Fassi. I am the founder of MADE, which is a beauty and wellness community. You can find me at Denise Fassi, which is down below right there pinned. And I'm also a mom of two. I have a five-year-old little girl who is five going on 25 named Lennox May and a 10-month-old baby boy named Dries. And uh, that's exactly why I'm still experiencing some postpartum outbreaks. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about two things. One, what happens to our skin during and especially after pregnancy, because that's where I am right now. And also some of the things that might be happening to your skin uh, during quarantine. So uh, what I wanted to remind you guys is 100% Pure will be having a little trivia contest going on after our live chat. So make sure you're listening in. I don't know what the question is, but they're going to ask you a trivia question based on today's masterclass. And um, someone will win two to three products in a giveaway. So make sure uh, you guys keep an eye out for that. So some of the things that happen during pregnancy, um, let's just say everything has to do with hormones. So some of the things that might happen obviously are weight gain, um, mood swings, and our skin tends to just completely change. And some, for some people, you know, you hear about pregnancy glow and wow, you know, her skin looks plump and glowy and that, um, those people are very lucky. I had that with my first pregnancy. I had that glow that everyone just kind of raves about, but not everyone has that. And so with my second pregnancy, my skin was very different, obviously, because my hormones were doing a different thing. And so you never really know what exactly is going to happen to your skin when you're pregnant. Um, if you are someone who is who has acne prone skin, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, your skin is going to just wild out when you get pregnant. So if anyone here is having that concern, um, don't worry, it may, but it may not. You just, you really don't know until you're there. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, we don't really talk about or it's not really um, a topic of conversation when we talk about being pregnant because we're so, as always, focused on the baby and focused on um, what we're doing for the baby, rightfully so, what we're eating. But um, all of those things um, are the right thing to do. But there's also the fact that like, you know, when you're pregnant, you feel so different. And um, taking care of your skin is a great way to help you feel more like yourself. And there's certain things that you really can um, uh, can help and some things that you really can't because hormones, again, they take over and you don't really know um, what they're going to do. And one of the most important things for me and that I stress with my um, community members is that when we're pregnant, it's the perfect time to really focus on using uh, natural, non-toxic, cleaner skincare products because obviously you are growing this little human being uh, inside of you and they're taking in everything you're taking in. So if you are pregnant um, or you're going to be pregnant soon, then please you know, consider that this is the perfect time to really go through everything that you're using on your body from your hair to your, you know, your your lotions, this is the perfect time to really think about transitioning into a cleaner uh, skincare and beauty routine. So for me, I know one of the biggest things I thought about after you do all the like, what am I gonna eat for my baby? What do I do to be healthy for my baby? Like put all of that aside. We're just talking, you know, skincare and beauty. One of the first things that I was really concerned about was uh, stretch marks. And ah, oh, stretch marks, I know. <laughs> it's like, oh no, am I gonna be the one? And again, this is one of those things where it's all hormone-based. You just 
don't know what's going to happen until you're there. And um, I do think that a good portion of it is out of our control, but I do think that there are ways to kind of keep, um, keep things at bay. So for me, with my first pregnancy, I was adamant about keeping, especially my belly area, moisturized, um, um, exfoliated. And I mean, my husband would laugh. I think probably three times a day, I was in the bathroom exfoliating, putting my lotions, putting my butters, oils constantly. And I will say that um, I was so adamant about it that I really think that that really helped me get no stretch marks the first go around. Now, I don't think that there's a product that's going to clear up um, stretch marks, but again, I kept my skin super moist, super hydrated, and basically that's what happens, right? So your belly, as it stretches, uh, to make room for the baby, it starts to expand. And when the skin is dry, it cracks. It's kind of the same way if any of you guys live in cold uh, or you know cold areas or experience winter, when you don't um, hydrate your hands or we're, as we're going through right now, because we're constantly washing our hands, right? And we move our hands a lot, when the skin is dry, it cracks. And so those cracks kind of you know form these breaks in the skin and then we get stretch marks. So I got a little cocky with my first pregnancy. So in my second pregnancy, I was like, I'm not gonna go that crazy. Um, and so I almost made it till the very end. And then around 30 something weeks, when I tell you, um, I had not been really adamant about it. I wasn't I wasn't, um, you know, in the bathroom two or three times moisturizing, exfoliating like I would have wanted to, um, or now that I look back, I should have. And I'll never forget the day I was sitting waiting to pick up my five-year-old, and I literally felt a stretch mark like open up on my tummy. I literally stood there and I looked at the other moms and was like, "Oh my gosh, I just got my." I could feel it. And it was because I was not keeping the skin moist and hydrated. So I wanted to talk about two products that I love from 100% Pure that I really feel are super luxurious and really beneficial to keeping your skin moist and hydrated. And for those of you ladies who like are not um, pregnant, I will also say that right now we are experiencing because we're at home and we're in the same kind of air all day long, um, that we are also experiencing dry skin. We're also washing our hands a lot. If you are, um, hopefully everyone's practicing social distancing and is in, in quarantine, but let's say, you know, my husband does the runs, I don't, but when he goes to the market, he immediately comes in, you know, takes everything, all his clothes off and he goes into the shower. So anytime we run out, like, we're constantly not, um, we're constantly showering, and this is the time that you really want to keep your skin moisturized. So these are two of my favorite 100% pure products here, and this is the Coconut Scrub. Can you guys see that? Okay. Um, sorry, I saw some, I, I I saw something that someone said. Oh, hi, the mom fluence. Yes, I think even after baby, obviously. I mean, I am the after you have your child self-care queen. I am the person who will tell you guys that you need to schedule in your self-care and part of my self-care is skincare and taking care of your body. Um, but specifically, um, just talking about going back to kind of how we keep the um, stretch marks at bay. Um, this is the coconut scrub. I wanna show you guys this. I wish you could smell through here, but you can't. Um, but I'm gonna try and show you these really large, I think they're called crystallines. Can you guys see that? Don't mind my nails, guys, because this is serious quarantine nail situation here. Um, so these are, I like that they're really, really large. These, the crystal sea salt. And I'm gonna try not to make too much of a mess. 
for my clothes, right? Hold on, I'm just gonna go for it. And you'll see right away the difference, right? So can you guys see how beautifully hydrated that looks? And these are based in apricot and um, what, I think it's, uh, is it a sesame oil or seed flour uh, oil? Hold on one second. And it's just, you can clearly see the difference. So I like to do this dry and also in the shower. So basically when I was behaving and I was pregnant, I, if I wasn't taking a shower, I would just lift my top up, do a rub, and then take a wet uh, washcloth and wipe down my belly afterwards. And then I would follow up with a body butter. So the reason that I always recommend using a body butter, basically anywhere in your skin, not only are they typically um, cleaner products, but they are also really, really super hydrating. You can see this is the coconut whipped and they're super hydrating. They're very, very lush and they're very um, thick and rich. And I always just prefer the way they feel, to be honest with you. Um, I love um, a moisturizer that isn't very greasy. So for me, I want my skin to really absorb something right away. I wanna see a change, I want it to feel smooth, but I also don't wanna feel like I want to wash my hands right after I put on lotion. And um, that's why I prefer to use a body butter. So, I mean, I did both hands now, so it's gonna be hard for you to see. So in terms of stretch marks, which I feel like is the only kind of skin thing that people, so that women think about when they are first pregnant, when they first find out they're pregnant. Um, in terms of that, I would say, no, nothing is going to keep you 100% from getting stretch marks. However, I do think that you can minimize the chances by making sure that you keep your skin super hydrated. Um, my favorite thing to do is to put on the body butter right after I come out of the shower, that's whether I'm pregnant, whether I'm not pregnant currently right now, keep it you know, by your nightstand, keep it um, uh, in the sh uh, right outside by the sink. So if you wash your hands, which we're doing a lot of that right now, um, so that you have it readily available and you're using it constantly so that we can have beautiful hydrated skin. So um, I would also say that, um, again, with my first, not a stitch. And with my second, um, I just it just happened to be that I really wasn't on my game as I would have as now that I would want to be. And um, and I definitely saw the difference. And you know what? These are my my mama uh, my mama wounds or what do they call them? Like my my war. I can't remember the phrase, but um, so I don't. I'm not terribly against them. It's just kind of what happened and, and they're beautiful in their own right. But for those of you who might be concerned about that, I wanted to address that first. Um, another thing that a lot of women, either when they're pregnant or if they're on birth control, um, might experience during uh, that time is hyperpigmentation. Um, also known as melasma, you've heard of uh, pregnancy mask, which typically um, kind of affects most of the area up here and around uh, around the mouth, or you can get um, battle scars. Thank you. Someone said those are your your battle scars or your tiger stripes. I love that. Um, but um, so the pregnancy mask you typically kind of get in this area, or it can be little brown spots, and they're flaky, again, has nothing, there's really nothing to do, there's nothing that you can do or know beforehand to know whether or not this is gonna happen to you. It really is a hormonal thing where basically um, uh, there's something that's responsible. We have cells that are responsible for, for creating pigment in our skin and 
basically when you're pregnant or you're taking a birth control, the hormones uh, encourage a large overproduction of, uh, of the pigment. And so you can get these like dry, splotchy, um, you know, patches around your skin, or you can get the pregnancy mask. And I think right now also while we're in quarantine, I know that a lot of friends have been talking to me about um, their skin feeling really, really dry. Um, and so they're seeing some flakiness as well. And so when it comes to that, I think that when you're talking about the hyperpigmentation and the melasma pregnancy mask, as they call it um, specifically, if you went to a dermatologist, more than likely they would put you on a uh, more serious kind of like a prescription based thing. And again, this is, as we talked about in the beginning, the perfect time where you really want to keep your skincare routine clean. And so the best course of action is really going to be to um, use a gentle, really gentle exfoliating like face wash. I know 100% Pure makes a, a really nice rice one. I don't have it on me today, unfortunately, um, because I have no, I'm not, I'm not experiencing any of that currently, so I don't have any in my beauty counter. Um, but uh, the rice water wash is a good place to start. And also what you really wanna do is stay out of the sun, stay in a cool kind of shaded area when you're outside. And if you are gonna be out in the sun, then you definitely wanna use sunscreen which 100 percent pure has a bunch of those for you guys to peruse but you want to definitely keep your skin protected and that will help from help the hyperpigmentation um from overreacting another thing of course is once you have that baby you are going to be a very tired mama <laughs> and you'll no longer get um, hours and hours of sleep. And um, that will lead to dark circles, which I have come accustomed to have since I've had a child for five years now. Um, and you might also find yourself right now, um, because of quarantine, as I do, a little restless. You might find that you are not sleeping as well. I know that I am trying to make a habit of, um, going to bed early but even when i'm in bed early i seem to still feel this very restless energy and the to-do list of all the things that i wish i could get done is kind of rattling off in my brain and so the next morning i wake up really tired and so i love to use um items that kind of have double duties so this is the coffee bean ice the coffee bean caffeine I said ice cream eye cream and I will show you guys this one and what I love about it is not only does this brighten but it also depuffs so that that's kind of the consistency I don't know if you guys and it goes on really well so there's no um sometimes I find that eye creams can um be a little too thick and I actually um, feel like they irritate, they somehow the product moves into my eye and it irritates me. Um, this actually um, doesn't do that and you can use it in the AM and PM, which makes it really nice to put underneath um, your makeup uh, since it sits pretty well, it absorbs into the skin really well. And um, again, I just really like that if you are going to be using something let's use products that can do more than one thing. So it's really gonna go in and help brighten under the eye and also depuff the area. Um, yes, it's very nice and lightweight. I, I'm gonna check in for some comments here. I've got a lot of people saying that they love that cream. Uh, which cream? Oh, oh, the coconut, the coconut butter. Yeah, it smells, it smells incredible. Um, let's see, let's see. Yes, the dermatologist will give you a steroid cream for the hyperpigmentation, which is something that, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to just tell you my own opinion is 
um, when you're pregnant, you probably wouldn't want to use a steroid cream. It wouldn't necessarily be as clean as possible. So thank you. Thanks. <laughs> thank you so much for the compliments on my skin. I really am adamant about taking care of my skin. It is really part of my self-care routine, um, amongst other things. And you know what? I always, um, I always like to have a couple of different routines. Like I have like my five to seven minute routine. I have my like 10 to 15 minute routine. And then I have my like really luxurious, like I've told my husband, don't bother me for an hour. I'm going into the, um, into the bathroom to just like indulge and take care. And I do a face steam. And so, um, taking care of my skin is actually really, really important to me. It, it not only, um, not only the art of doing and, and massaging uh, helps me relax, but also I just feel better when my skin looks better. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Um, let's see, let's see any more questions before I move on. Um, okay, so suggestions for the dark circle. So I would, uh, this is the product that I would suggest. Um, I don't know, can you guys see that? And um, again, a little goes a long way. Um, you can use this in the morning and in the night. And so I, I just like the consistency of it, again, uh, because I can wear it under my makeup uh, without it making my makeup move. And let's see, different routine for different seasons. Yep, absolutely, 100% true. I also have different routines when I travel because there are certain places um, our family moves. We, our family moved a lot, um, usually throughout the year, obviously not right now, but we um, are in New York and in LA a lot. Um, we're based, sorry, we're by coastal, so in LA and in New York and my routines uh, my skincare routines for both places are very different. And then we travel a lot. Um, we spend um, some time in the summer away and so definitely um, different as well. Hi, 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 hi. Let's see what else. Do, 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 do. Um, the questions about um, the caffeine allergy, I will let 100% um, Pure come in and just kind of talk to you guys about that. Um, I don't know about micro needling, um, but um, I've yet to kind of go in and figure out what I will do about the uh, my tiger stripes. I'm kind of just, I'm still in the phase of, you know, I had my son 10 months ago. Um, I haven't got into, I just started kind of going to the going to the gym, like in my house, like working out. Um, probably last, was it last week? Like two or three weeks ago. And then I fell off and then now I'm back on. So, you know, I'm not sure what I'll do, but um, but maybe it'll be Michael Needling, who knows? Let's see, let's see. Da, 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 da. Sorry guys, I'm just scrolling and I'm gonna try the scrub, definitely try the scrub. Um, okay, so now I wanna talk about kind of postpartum acne and um, this is something that I also wasn't aware of until I um, had my daughter because I thought, okay, I had my, I, I, it's, I guess I just didn't think about the fact that like okay, we have this child and then you just think that you're naively that everything's gonna go back to normal and it just doesn't happen that way um, that quickly. There are other things involved. Again, your, horm your hormones need to really regulate. And um, if you're breastfeeding like I am, I, I, I did with her and I am with my son right now, um, there are ebbs and flows with that. So while you have literally when you have a child within i can't remember exactly don't quote me on this if it's 24 or 48 hours um but like your hormones something changes and it starts to regulate a little bit right um things come down things go up but then what happens is you know you start 
creating milk, you're breastfeeding. Through your journey of breastfeeding, you might be breastfeeding 12 times a day, then at some point you're breastfeeding six times a day, then eventually you're weaning. And all of those things really will affect your skin. And so like I said, you can see like I've got a friend here, here, not terrible, thankfully so, but some mornings out of nowhere, I'll wake up and I'll just have like something here, here, and you really know that those are hormonal. And so you really want to use products that are going to um, help you deal with that um, and products that are full of antioxidants and what 100% Pure has that I think would, is great for um, not only those moments, but also right now, um, again, when we are in quarantine and we are suffering from, again, restlessness and sleeplessness, which obviously leads to tired looking skin, but also this kind of like recycled air because we are in our homes all day long. Um, you will seem to notice that you might have, you know, sagging or your skin looks a little tired or dull. And so these are two, um, the constant, wait, hold on. This is the serum. And this is a concentrate cream. Should I turn on this way for you guys? Like I always forget like the camera sees backwards or whatever. Um, but anyway, so this is a serum. You would, you would start with this one. It's called the green tea. Um, it's the E, I always m mess this up. So I'm going to look at it and tell you the E G C G, um, concentrate serum. It's, it's has green tea extract and it's a really potent dose. Um, and I'll show you guys what this one looks like. So it's got a little pump. I'll use it on this hand. Can you see? So this is a serum. It's super lightweight. You can see that. And it spreads really easily. Um, this one you want to work in a little bit. And you could use a, um, a gua sha or a jade roller, or you can, you know, perform your own little hand massage. I love to use beauty tools. That's kind of just my thing. Um, so you work this one in a little bit more. And what it is, is these will help delay the signs of aging thanks to, so there are a couple things that it has that I don't want to um, mangle the name. So I'm going to not, I'm not going to say them, but the antioxidants inside that really help delay um, the skin from aging. This is, okay, so this is the concentrate cream. I'll show you this one. This comes with this kind of applicator. So this is something also you tend to kind of work it in. And when you are using these products on the face, you always want to work your product in and up because we want to keep our skin up. So make sure that when you're putting things on, you know, sometimes you see people and they're doing this and down. And what you want to do is kind of work and massage your products up. Even if you're not using a tool, right? You want to work everything in there right up. So the daily moisturizer is going to help soften and um, neutralize the skin. Hold on, I'm going to put the cap on this. Um, hold on, there we go. And um, they're really going to help with sun damage. Again, delay um, the signs of aging, calm any redness that you would have in the skin. Um, I don't know why, but I tend to um, be very red after the... <laughs> Um, recently. Uh, I don't know if it's hormone based. Um, I obviously can't go see a dermatologist right now. So um, I don't know if it's hormone based or if it's just being in quarantine. But what I have found is that like I am waking up and I'm really kind of red, like right over here and a little like flushed over here. So this will help kind of calm down the redness. It's obviously going to help with um, light wrinkles, little lines, those little creases. So you would put that on um, as well as the, um, the uh, caffeine eye, uh, eye cream. Let's see, I'm gonna go in. Love the jade roller. I love a jade roller, absolutely. Um, go in, let's check out some questions. 
let's see. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys for being here. So sweet. Okay, hold on. I'm back. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so someone is asking if the um, the cream depuffs. Yes, the cream is also going. Uh, the eye cream is also going to um, depuff and help with uh, under eye dark uh, brightening up under the eye. Um, just checking. Any more questions? So the other thing that I wanted to mention to you guys was, um, oh, I just wrote a jade roll. How do you like it? How do, okay. Um, so um, I've been using a jade roller, gosh, I can't even tell you how long. My grandmother, <laughs> actually, who is like my beauty inspiration of all beauty inspirations, um, has been... Um, someone who's used a lot of like beauty tools and she's you know when i was growing up she talked about avoiding certain foods and eating certain foods and i didn't really understand it growing up like she couldn't eat tomatoes and i'd go well why can't you eat tomatoes they're tomatoes right they're super healthy um later on as i become an adult i start to understand that there are certain things um, that our body is intolerant to and um i'm not sure for you guys if this is um something you've heard of before but um it's it's not as serious as an allergy but basically there are things that we can consume that um can cause um changes in our skin so for her it was tomatoes and then when i grew up and realized you know this is really true there are things that we can consume that really affect our skin or how we feel if we're tired or not um I uh, had one of these intolerance tests taken and found out that I had an intolerance to onions. So onions are almost in everything. Um, you use them at home in a lot of things. They're um, probably everything you eat outside at a restaurant. And so I'd never had any reaction to them, um, but they came up, it came up in my blood work. And so my doctor asked me to t remove them from my diet four days, um, four days off and three days on because I was like, how can I completely remove onions? Anyway, what I found is that uh, the darkness under my eyes definitely, definitely improved. And um, also, uh, sometimes after you eat, you might notice that you are a little um, cloudy or you might get tired. You know, you kind of get the itis, as they say, or... Um, you're like, oh, I feel like I've got a food baby. You feel really bloated, but I didn't eat that much. And it's not necessarily about how much you ate, but more so kind of what you ate and how your body reacts to what you ate. Um, so um, how can I get an intolerance test? So there are certain doctors who, um, who do them. There's a certain kind of blood work, um, like a, a, a blood work panel that they do. It's much deeper than like when you go to a... Um, like a Western doctor and you just get your annual checkup and they run a little blood sample. This is, they probably take 10 or 12, you know, small vials of blood and they go in and they, they um, are checking things at a deep cellular level. Um, and this is the way that they can um, tell you. And so um, eventually what happened is I did that for a year or two, I can't remember, it was like 18 months or something. And I was allowed to reintroduce onions into my diet. And thankfully it doesn't come up again, but that's kind of the same similar thing with allergies, like one minute um, in your life, one moment in your life, you might be allergic to something. When I was little, I was uh, allergic to uh, shellfish. Um, and then probably in my twenties, um, I tried uh, shrimp or something and it's like it didn't have a reaction and I opened the door for, for uh, self, a shellfish for me. And then uh, about five years ago, I stopped eating um, any meat, so meat or fish. Um, so I don't eat any of that anymore. But um, for a big period of my life, I was allergic to something. So it's very similarly, you could have an intolerance to something, kind of avoid it. But those things also do, um, they do affect your skin. I'm gonna see. 
um, if you guys have any more questions. Um, do you get that test at a dermatologist? That's a great um, question. No, you would get that test at um, a more, um, like a naturopath or a, um, a Eastern medicine doctor, or I think they're called DOs. Um, is it DO or OD? Um, but yeah, you would, you would, you wouldn't get it at a dermatologist. It's also here to, um, um, those tests are also to like check your gut and it's, it's very health based and to, um, make sure that, you know, you don't have a leaky gut and well, there's a whole nother, a whole nother live chat, but, um, maybe we'll, we'll set one of those up on made because I want to go back to any of your skincare questions that you might have. Um, let me see. I love that under eye cream. I love that so many um, of you, yes, a holistic doctor, but there's definitely several different types of holistic doctors. Um, I love that so many of you guys love this eye cream. I think it has one of the best consistencies um, of any of, of any eye creams actually. And I think that it's super, super um, velvety. Um, it's completely It's completely taken my dark circles away. I love that. Are you are you a mom? How many kids? How many kids do you have? I always joke that you can whenever I don't have makeup on, you can tell that I haven't slept since 2015 um, because I just <laughs> I just have been so exhausted, especially right now. Um, and I think that that's another thing that's really taking a big toll. Um, obviously, being a, a parent at any point in time is very very stressful, but especially right now as um, all of us, moms and dads, um, are really being pushed to the max, being a parent, homeschooling, having to teach, um, you know, having to be a teacher with them. Uh, there's no socialization, you know, in my house, I don't have a sibling that's around the same age for my child, so I'm also um, her playmate, but I'm also trying to work, and there's so much guilt and stress attached to that as well, and so that really, um, plays into how our skin is affected. Um, that kind of stress can cause premature aging. So you really want to make sure that you are using products that are going to assist and kind of delay um, any of those. And that's what I really love about the um, the green tea, both the, uh, the serum and the moisturizer is that they are very, very potent and have these antioxidants that are there to help delay the process of those fine lines from creeping up. Also, just to get back to kind of the basics, obviously you want to be drinking a lot of water right now. Um, keeping a humidifier in your bedroom is another great tip to keeping your skin moisturized and supple. And, um, and so if you um, don't have one, that might be something you might wanna make a small investment in to have a, a humidifier in your room going off at night when you're sleeping. And if you're pregnant, this will also help you with um, some of the sinus issues. This is something that tends to happen towards the end of pregnancy for some reason. A lot of women experience, um, and I'm trying to think, I got it with one of the pregnancies, I can't remember. It might've been I got it with my first and not my second. Um, and one of my girlfriends had it very, very bad early on, but usually it happens in your third trimester where you tend to get um, these sinus issues where you can't breathe. And so you've got to like prop yourself up in those pillows to really help it. But also a humidifier is definitely something that um, would help that situation very much. And um, also going back to kind of what we put in our bodies um, outside of product and, and more talking about food, is um, eating foods that are high in folate and zinc are really helpful also for any of the um, hyperpigmentation and uh, the melasma or um, pregnancy mask as they call it. So I just wanted to remind you guys that. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, retinol is good for fine lines, but there might be some concern when you're pregnant. So um, that's why I didn't include uh, that in my roundup. 
This is my first pregnancy as well. I didn't even think to use a humidifier. Absolutely, it's a wonderful idea. You will, the good news about buying one now is you will end up using it forever, um, not only <laughs> to keep your skin plump and hydrated, but um, also as your kids come home, you know, start going out to school, or even as babies, they tend to get a little um, uh, sniffle or, you know, they catch a cold and um, having a humidifier on hand is great to keep their room moist and kind of help them breathe because um, they're so tiny and it's really heartbreaking when they have a stuffed nose. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> Thank you guys. I love that you guys are talking about my hair. Um, that I think we can take that conversation over to um, my uh channel and um oh my little did my pin erase my pin erased um but i'm at denise fassi and we can have a hair chat there i really want to see if um you guys want to chat about anything else in terms of uh skin either during um during quarantine or uh before or after pregnancy Let's see, what else? Da, 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 da. I'm currently 26 weeks pregnant and have insomnia. Yes, I had that as well with both pregnancies. Um, all I can say is what I learned to do is get my sleep when I was tired. So if it's two o'clock in the afternoon and you find that you are tired, don't think about the fact that it's two o'clock in the afternoon. If you, um, especially right now when we have the ability to set our own schedules because we're all working from home, um, if you have that opportunity, go take that nap. Or when you come home from work, if you can, find, find those moments to take a nap versus waiting till, oh, I have to go to bed you know, until the end of the night and then you get to the end of the night and then all of a sudden um, you can't fall asleep. Another big thing for me that I even try to do now um, is washing my face and doing, doing my skin routine way before I actually want to go to bed. So what, what I've noticed is if I plan to go to bed at 11, but I go and wash my face at 10.45, um, especially the quick one, not the like kind of luxurious like routine that's gonna wind me down, but the like basics, right? Wash, serum, moisturizer, and keep it moving. Like that wakes me up. And so what I've learned to do is kind of come straight home, immediately take off my makeup. Um, obviously this was when we were allowed outside the house, but um, whatever time it's gonna be kind of like around dinner time or after dinner time, just take off my makeup if I'm wearing any wash and moisturizer and then it's on and it's on for the rest of the night and then I don't kind of risk the, uh, you know, I don't take the risk of waking myself up right before I'm ready to go to sleep. But insomnia is definitely something that, um, it's kind of one of those um, things that happens when you're pregnant but hopefully you will get um, some rest soon. Just, you know, sleep in late, figure it out when you, figure it out when you can, nap when you can. One of the best advice, um, pieces of advice I was given when I was pregnant was to sleep when the baby sleeps. So when that baby comes, if you have the ability to do that, um, and it's, it's obviously work is a factor, and if you have another child, that's a factor, um, but, there's also the fact that it's really hard because you have this newborn little baby that's so beautiful and so yummy and you just wanna spend all your time with this child. And you can just stare at this child sleeping all day. <laughs> um, but really one of the best pieces of advice I've ever received is sleep when the baby sleeps because when the baby is up, you don't wanna be tired. Um, I have a couple more minutes with you guys. So I just wanted to make sure um, there weren't any more questions about Skin in terms of pregnancy or quarantine. Again, I'm just gonna quickly go over some of my faves. Um, for anyone who's just joining us a little late, 
There is the coconut um, scrub. This is the body scrub with the crystalline that is in, let me see, is this an apricot? It's in, there's one that's an apricot oil. Hold on. That's like the big sea salt, right? Um, so that's an apricot oil or sun, uh, sunflower oil. It's really, really great at exfoliating the skin. That's something that you want to do all over your body, especially when you're pregnant. You want to do that. Just do that two or three times around your belly. And as soon as you come out of the shower, then you want to pop on the butter. And that's if you're pregnant or if you're not pregnant, but just want like really yummy skin. This is the, the coconut butter. Um, there's a lavender one as well that I love. It smells so yummy. Super rich, thick. Um, typically butters are um, cleaner. Uh, and when I say cleaner, I mean um, most of the natural kind of non-toxic uh, clean beauty brands really um, tend to create creams that are whipped butters because um, they're able to uh, make a rich hydrating product uh, without you know any of the stuff we don't want oh. and then these what did I do with the okay so this is the cream I need to find the I may have dropped it okay here's the serum and these are the two um, of the um, again I always tend to eat this all up so it's a EGCG green tea and that's the concentrate cream this is a serum you would use before these are going to help you with fine lines delay your age you know delay aging in the skin soften these are you can see they're both white but you can see that the this one is let me see don't mind my nails guys so the serum is really really lighter and then this is the, the cream has a bit of it uh, a different texture. These um, going to help with sun damage and age spots, sagging skin, wrinkles. Um, they are going to even out dull skin. Uh, so again, if you find that your skin needs a uh, pick me up, whether because you're pregnant or if because you are at home in quarantine and your skin is just looking drabby, these um, drabby is drabby a word? Um, your skin's just looking drab. Um, these are going to liven that the, uh, your skin up. And then again, which seems to be a big favorite today is the um, caffeine bean eye cream. And again, what I love about this product is that it is on double duty. It is going to help your dark circles by brightening them, but it's also going to depuff your under eye area. And I just love how velvety it is. And again, I love that I can wear it under my makeup and it doesn't um, create any like creasing or affect um, any of my concealer, which I use a lot of because I'm a mom who doesn't get any sleep. Um, I have a couple more minutes. I just wanna see if you guys have any more questions. Um, overall color tone, I would say that you want to incorporate um, either both or start with just one of the green tea extract uh, products that I was just going over um, to help with overall tone of your skin. And uh, the Jade Roller, uh, I can't remember what the question was. Um, I, oh, did I, I diverted. That's what happened, guys. Thank you so much. I diverted because I started talking about my grandmother and then food. So I've been using a Jade Roller for, I don't know, a gazillion years. I use it religiously. Um, I tend to use a Jade Roller in, in the morning mostly. I do use I do use it at night too, but I use it mostly in the morning and I use a gua sha at night. That's because I keep my jade roller in a fridge. So in the morning, the first thing I grab is I literally walk, grab my jade roller and then walk back into the bathroom and I roll as I like brush my teeth, as I use the restroom, just to help waken up my skin. And then at night, um, when I have 
the time, which I really try to do three to four times a night, I use um, I use a gua sha. Sometimes I use a jade roller, um, but mostly now I'm using a gua sha to really um, you uh, help product penetrate and to kind of contour and um, focus in on the areas where I want to just kind of like lift. So that, sorry, I diverted for that. Thanks for catching me. Um, somebody, somebody, somebody said they're late. Don't worry, I'm going to save this so you can come back to uh, watch it all over again. Although, hmm, that might be a good way to cheat because don't forget that there is going to be a trivia question in 100% Pure's uh, Instagram stories. So make sure that you go back and watch that. So you can um, answer, enter to win, uh, answer the question and enter to win two to three products that they are giving away today. Um, let me see any more questions. Um, love both the coconut oil and the lavender. Yes. Oh, I haven't had, I haven't tried the rose uh, water one, but somebody is saying that they love that. Uh, yes, absolutely. Sorry. I forgot to mention that what makes the, um, the whipped coconut butter so good is that it is a shea butter. Um, so that's why it's super thick rich hydrating and really just i mean it immediately like just makes your skin feel really really hydrated and and just super yummy and again what i love about this you know their particular brand uh their particular product and 100 percent pure as a brand is that um the the consistency of it doesn't make you want to wash your hands afterwards because um, that's a big pet peeve of, peeve of mine. If I put on a product because I want it to hydrate and moisture my skin and then I immediately feel like I want to wash it off of my hands because I feel like I can't touch something afterwards. Um, this is not like that. Your skin kind of really absorbs it and it's got a, a beautiful, wonderful feeling. Um, and that's because, um, you know, the brand really uses a wonderful, uh, pure ingredients. And um, a beautiful thing that they're doing is not only um, always making sure they're, they are uh, giving you guys the best with their products and ingredients, but also doing things like what we're doing today, um, just hosting classes to educate you guys and give back to you guys as a community to make sure that you guys feel empowered when you are making your purchases with them. So um, it's almost time for me to go, but I am so um, grateful to have spent the hour with you guys. It's a lot to cover and I could go on for hours <laughs> and I could divert several times. Um, so feel free if, um, if there's anything that I didn't specifically answer, uh, my handle is there at the bottom. I'm at Denise Fassi. I am a skincare enthusiast and I just absolutely love to talk about this stuff and I love to talk about wellness. Feel free to DM me, um, come over to my page and talk about other things or reach out to 100% Pure. I know that um, they would be happy to talk to you guys specifically about your skincare needs and um, the rest of the products that they might know better and how they might assist you. So thank you guys. Um, I'm going to say goodbye for today. Um, thank you so much. It was so fun. I hope to keep in contact and chat with you guys soon. Bye.